In this tutorial, what we're going to be looking at is adding realistic highlights and shadows to your Glamour Retouch. Now, to give you an example, I have a perfectly nice photo here, which I've already worked on. I'll just show you the finished product. There are some improved highlights along the high points of the skin, cheekbones and nose, and some enhanced shadows along the edges, which also adds a slimming effect to the overall picture. I'll just turn this one off. Now the methods for getting these highlights and shadows, there are a lot of different ways you can go about it, and I think I say that just about with every tutorial, but it's especially true with this one. I'm going to show you one method, which is a manual method. You'll need to paint in the highlights yourself, and then blur to get the effect that you actually want. It's very effective, it's used by a lot of professional retouchers, and you can also adapt it to get some interesting special effects with your glamour image. First of all, we are going to need an empty layer. So I'll go to my layers palette, and I'm going to add in a new empty layer. And just so that we start off on the right foot, I'm going to change the blending mode of this layer to soft light. The soft light blending mode is going to be used on all of the layers and shadows and highlights that we're going to create for this. Okay, now I'm going to rename my layer. I'm going to call it Highlights Base because we're going to do this two times. I need to reset my color palette back to black and white, then bring white to the front. If you're using a PC or a Mac, you can just hit the X key on your keyboard to switch between black and white. Very useful little shortcut. And we'll need to have a brush. And our brush will need to be a little bit smaller than this. And I'm going to zoom in. So I'll just use my shortcut keys here to zoom into the area that I'm going to be working on for my highlights. And I'll just knock down my brush size a little bit. I'm just right-clicking this down. For those of you who are looking at my rather strange looking interface, yes, I am using CS4. CS4 is slightly different to the other versions of Photoshop, but the functions are still the same, so this is equally true for just about any version from version 5 onwards. Okay, we've got our layer, we've got our brush, we are ready to go. Take my brush, and I am using a Wacom tablet to do this, but you can use a mouse, of course. I'm going to just very gently paint in a couple of highlight spots where I feel it could use a little bit of enhancement. Now, I'm not being terribly fussy about how I'm doing this. I'm just doing this quite roughly because I'm going to let the work for this be done by the Gaussian Blur filter. So I'm just putting in a couple of these little highlight areas that I think could use a little bit of extra punch. And I'll think that will do for now. I can live with this on my first go around. We'll go to our filter menu. We'll take the blur tool and choose Gaussian blur. I'll just drag over the Gaussian blur box so you can see what's happening. And as you can see already, it's really blown those out. So I'll just dial it back down. And I'll just gradually increase it so you can see the effect. I'm using a very high resolution image here. So you might find that a low radius setting will give you the effect that you need. This is just because I'm using a very, very big image, as you can see down here. It takes a little bit of time before the effect really kicks in. Now, once we get up to around about, in this case, around about the 27 mark, yeah, that's starting to blow out a little bit. So I'll leave it around about 30, I think, in this case should be good. And we'll say OK. Now, in itself, you might find that this is enough. You can fiddle around with the opacity to lower and increase the effect as you wish, but I'm going to go the extra mile here. I'm going to add in another layer, and I'm going to call this Highlight Top. This is going to give us an extra fine little shine to the highlights that we're about to add in. So once again, I need my brush tool. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. Just add in a couple of little spots here and there. But this time not quite as defined, not quite as big. And if you do blow it, like I did just then, just take that one out here. Oops. Better set that back to full opacity, hey Ashley? Yes, good boy. Take that out, set that back to brush again. Just paint that in one more time. Yep, that'll do. Okay, 
Now when we blow it out this time, we use the filter Gaussian blur once again, but not quite as extreme. Just lower it down a little bit and just gently start to push this up until it starts to blow out. A little bit more, okay. A bit less, a bit more. Yep, that'll do for this. See, the settings are about half of what the original one was. It was about 30, 33. This is 17, so it's about half. But use your eyes, judge it yourself. Okay, the mode. This, again, it might be perfectly good for you. Again, you could fiddle with the opacity and mix this in. Again, as I said, you can create some nice special effects with this. But I'm just going to show you the way that's often used, and I like it, is again, change the blending mode to soft light and that softens it automatically. In fact, I don't think I even need to fiddle around with the opacity. I think that sits in quite nicely with its environment. Any individual parts that you do not like, get either an eraser tool or put in a layer mask and just gently paint out areas that you don't like and you can soften the effect to your heart's content. All right, now that's the highlights done. What about the shadows? Put in a new layer. I'll call this one shadows. The technique is identical. Um, I'm not going to use a double layer for this, I'm just going to do this one time because I think you get the idea already. But the mode will change to soft light. And the colour will not be white, nor will it be black. In fact, we're going to go for a very dark shade of skin tone. And what you should do is, to do this quickly, is grab an eyedropper tool, take a skin tone sample, and then double click on that skin tone sample in your colour picker and make it even darker. Pull it right down. You can go very dark with this and say OK. Now it might look like it's so dark that it would only fit on Negroid or African American skin, but in fact this will look great when we start painting in. So I'll just go into the areas where I want to increase the shadows and I'm going to do this very lightly. And you can see it mixes in quite well because of the soft light mode. It's not really as dark as you may have feared. So I'll just put a little bit there. I'll go in under here, a little bit there, increase the shadow around that edge there, a little bit there. So I'm just accentuating a few shadows here and there, just to give it all a little bit more definition. That's all you're really want, wanting in this one, is just a little bit more def definition for the whole thing. Again, if you don't like the final result of this, it's an easy fix, just get in there with the eraser or a layer mask and just paint the things out. It's no big deal. Now I'm doing this very, very quickly, so I'm not expecting to get Vogue quality results, but you'll get the idea. Okay, now let's blur. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we'll just dial it up to about the same level of around about 30. Yep, it's almost identical, around about 33 and you get a nice shadowing effect. Now cleaning up, you might decide you want to clean up some of the edges because when you do that blur, some of those shadows and highlights, they do tend to spill over the edges. So put in either a layer mask or get the eraser tool and clean up around those edges.